Hello and welcome back to Aging Well, a monthly production of Somerville Cambridge Elder Services. I'm your host and our topic this month is opioids and older adults. And in this segment, we're going to talk a little bit about how to be more opioid savvy. And for this segment, we welcome in a new guest or a returning guest, pardon me. Hi, I'm Nora I'm from Protective Services at Somerville Cambridge Elder Services. Welcome back. Thank you. So let's talk about being opioid savvy. I guess maybe start with what should people know about opioids? So I think um, one thing to know is that opioids have risks and they have benefits. And I'm sure, you know, a lot of us have heard in the news about the risks, you know, in the extreme overdose and death. Um, other risks, you know, include, particularly um, in older adults, include things such as um, falls. Mm. Opioids can have a very sedating effect, and so they really increase the fall risk in older adults who might have issues with balance. Um, another possible risk is um, drug interactions. So if you're taking more than one medication, it's really important to be talking to your doctor and your pharmacist mm -hmm. to make sure there's not going to be negative interactions because um, opioids, like I said, are sed sedative and, um, you know, if you're on other medications that have that similar, you can have a really negative effect. Mm -hmm. um, so those, those are a couple of the, um, you know, main risks, I would say. Um, and one other thing is having to do with safe storage. I know that was something we wanted to bring up because I guess that can often be where trouble comes into. Uh, not to close the door on uh, what we should know, but I think one of the things to know was Absolutely. the importance of safe storage. Um, yeah, um, well, so storage is really important um, because most of prescription opioid misuse comes from diversion. That is people taking or buying or stealing prescriptions that were not prescribed to them um, and then misusing them. So, and a lot of that comes from people um, taking them out of someone's medicine cabinet or, um, you know, sometimes I think in cases where someone needs to make money, they sell them to other folks. But mm -hmm. in terms of the medicine cabinet, it's really important to be storing them per, probably in a lockbox is the best option mm -hmm. to make sure that people who are coming over, people who live with you, are not stealing your medications. Another mm -hmm. way to make sure that's not happening is to be counting your medication regularly to make sure you're not missing any. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you maybe have experienced in protective services that that's been an issue. Yeah, definitely diversion comes up a lot. Um, it can be either the elder getting rid of selling the medications or also their adult children or somebody else visiting the home taking them. And often our intervention is to help give them a lockbox to keep it protected or even getting medication management assistance into the home to help distribute them. Mm. This is like a misconception nexus because we have misconceptions about opioids and then we have misconceptions about elder protective services a lot, which yeah. you've been on the show to discuss in the past. Mm -hmm. But for today, I'd love to hear a little bit about how you come into contact with this issue through uh, Elder Protective Services. Yeah, so uh, we do have a lot of um, assumptions about what we do. Uh, we do work with people that are self-neglecting or are being neglected, and with opiates, that's probably the most common way. Um, Self-neglect could be the elder um, has substance use issues. Um, in the cases of neglect, it could be a family member stealing their medications, um, putting their housing at risk. We often work with elders whose housing is uh, at risk at the moment um, and we have to help try to preserve it. Eviction? Eviction, yeah, sorry. Mm -hmm. So uh, That comes up a lot and it's very difficult to preserve housing in those situations. It's basically a circumstance where they're falling behind in rent or is it more of a behavioral sort of thing? Or? Both of those things, yeah. It can be um, falling behind in rent because they're spending their money elsewhere. It could also be because there's been use in the home which is a major violation of leases. Mm. Um, Adult children might be also struggling with addiction and don't have anywhere to go, and parents want to help their children, so they'll let them stay with them, which is an, um, another violation of leases. In terms of what you're able to do with uh, people in those circumstances, are there any major ways to help, or what, what's the most of what you're able to do? I think the best thing if somebody's housing is at risk uh, is to contact us, because 
the biggest part of our work is doing advocacy for people and we will do what we can to work with landlords and the elder to try to preserve their housing and we can get very creative in how we can assist people whether it's referring to um, Institute for Health and Recovery to their PCP um, also to the connect program um, management is often willing to work with people if there are resources to help support them mm. and that's what we try that's great um, now uh, on to an issue we've sort of touched on a little bit, but uh, signs that somebody is misusing. Sure. So I think um, one thing that's difficult in older adults is that substance use and opioid misuse in particular can often mimic other um, symptoms and illnesses and disease. So it is a, it's a tricky issue, um, and there are some things to look for. Behaviorally, one of the main things to look out for is if someone is um, constantly needing early refills of their medication, that might indicate that they're selling them or taking them um, outside of the dosage that their doctor gave. Mm -hmm. And another thing that's really uh, one of the main signs is if someone is using multiple pharmacies, mm -hmm. because that means they might be trying to get doubles of their doses. Mm -hmm. um, I think. Um, you know, some side effects that are just side effects, not necessarily of misuse, but of opioids, but should probably be checked in upon are um, over sedation and, um, you know, constipation, nausea, dizziness are sort of general side effects of opioids. Mm -hmm. um, another sort of like symptom to look out for is confusion. Mm -hmm. um, and in some rare cases, there's sort of a drug induced dementia like symptoms that come up. So, um, you know, something we have been talking about is that if that is an issue, if that does seem to be a symptom, it's important to check out not just, you know, whether someone might be having Alzheimer's, but are they using medication? Are they using drugs? Are they using alcohol as well? Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of factors to consider, but yes, it seems absolutely. like that's something that should be on people's radar that that might be one of the causes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and then it goes to what to do. And I know that we're going to talk about resources, but is there anything else? Uh, seeking out resources seems like a good step. Is there, is there anything else in terms of what to do if you think somebody is misusing? I think definitely just reaching out for help and knowing what resources are available, which will be in the next segment. But if you are concerned about an elder, you're always welcome to call Protective Services. And we love to help people as much as we can. And that's our job is to work with people that are at risk. Um, and I think also safe storage of the medications was a big one. And there's the drug take back in April. We'll have the dates mm. for that. Yeah, that is an important thing to bring up is um, another way to avoid diversion is making sure you're getting rid of medications you're not using. So you can drop off these drugs at the drug take back days or at your local police departments. Um, so yeah, and I, I would say just jumping off of that, I think calling Elder Protective Services is a great option. I also think, you know, just reaching out compassionately to say you're worried to some, for someone is never a bad idea. You're probably not going to change anyone's mind overnight. It's not appropriate to get into conflict around it. Mm -hmm. But just offering support is generally a first step in the right direction. Mm -hmm. And I think particularly around the shame and stigma that exist around opioids in older adults, having someone just reach out and say this is a problem, it's not your fault, mm -hmm. and, but, and it can be treated. I think is really important. I think you raised a very important issue there, shame and stigma. Mm -hmm. That's definitely, we have an initiative in my hometown that's all about erasing the stigma. Right. Is that still a fairly major issue with this? Absolutely. I think particularly um, in older cohorts, you know, drug use is very shamed. Um, and the idea that you're dealing with addiction at you know a certain age can produce all types of self-shame and stigma and people not reaching out for services. When really it's it's not really a shame circumstance. Right. Addiction is not a reflection on anyone's moral character. It is a chronic disease that can literally change the functioning of your brain and it requires you know treatment like any other chronic illness like diabetes. Well, hopefully we're reaching some people with valuable information to help them. They'll know where to go. Yeah. So, um, thanks again for joining us today. Thank you. Thank you.
That's all the time we have for Aging Well right now. We'll be right back with some more. Thank you. <music>